Hello and welcome. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Straight into it. Yeah. Straight in. No messing. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Popcorn and Joysticks, episode 6, our regular podcast where we talk about games, movies and TVs, anything else entertainment-wise that we enjoy. My name is Theo, I am here today with James. That's me, hello, hello, hello. And Holly. That's me. And we've got a great show ahead uh, of us today and we will be talking about Xbox and Bethesda's game conference. We've got Avatar 2 news. (sighs) We've got some game reviews that we've produced coming up, mm-hmm. so we can briefly talk about those. But first, before we get into any of that, Holly, you're going to tell us a little bit about our Twitter. Yes, everyone, just go and follow our Twitter. It is great fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm biased, but we've created a Twitter and we got some really cool, fun stuff over there, like trivia. We've been doing trivia every day and then we are planning some giveaways and um, just all the other stuff we're getting up to, really. So it just is, a little Twitter plug. That's it all is, it is. It is very good. <laughs> it's very good fun. We've basically created name a that game, game called Name That Game, where we give you like a very small section of a cover of a game. It could be any game in the history of gaming, um, and we basically are challenging you guys to guess the game or name that yeah. game. Uh, it's good fun. I think I've got maybe one right because we got <laughs> taken in turns of like choosing a game and making them ourselves. So even we don't know what they yeah. are sometimes because only one of us will do it basically on a certain day. So mm. yes, come over to Twitter, join in with the fun. Um, yeah, basically a little bit of housekeeping yeah. up front of the podcast. Yeah, it's a little bit of daily JHT for you. Yes, yes, exactly. Because, you know, if you haven't got enough of us already with our <laughs> podcast and our gaming news... You and can have more. You can have more over on Twitter. Yeah, and we'll, we'll put the link for that down in the description as well. And, and it'll, it'll probably be on the screen. bottom of the screen here somewhere. Yes. So, a little Great. bit of housekeeping out Done. of the way. We had some big... E3 news this week, mm-hmm. which of course E3 is cancelled this year. There's no event happening. Wow, However, wow. Micro- Micro- Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft, 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 hey? yeah, Microsoft have announced that they're doing a little <laughs> summer presentation uh, on the 12th of June with Bethesda. So yes. it's officially titled the Xbox and Bethesda mm. uh, Game Showcase. 12th of June. Um, what are we expecting? What do we want to see, James? I want to see. First? Some good Xbox announcements. Ooh, you'll probably get some of those. <laughs> you think we'll see some? You'll be watching the right thing, hopefully. I think good. so. If you're tuning in to the Xbox and Bethesda showcase looking for the latest Mario news, you will be disappointed. Uh, <laughs> well, luckily for me, I do like Xbox. Um, what am I looking forward to? I would like to see maybe an announcement of Gear 6. Yeah. I think that would be a really, really cool thing to see. It's been what, a few years now. And obviously we had that, um, uh, what's it, the Unreal Engine, yep. the new yeah. Unreal Engine kind of sneak peek, which was kind of Gear 6, tease. but not quite Gear 6. It was very Gear 6 y, but very, they, yeah. they were quite explicit. This is not Gear 6. Even though it was I definitely think they're lying, Gear 6. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to see that. I don't know if we will. I kind of expecting we're not going to because when that um unreal engine was announced that they were saying that i think the coalition was actually creating a new game or ip mm. or something and they weren't working on gears so i mean that's was, a good question like yeah. would you would you be happier to see gear six or would you rather see a new ip from the coalition i, I think it depends on what that what, what will be yeah. like judging Gear 6 on another game what they're developing if it's anywhere near as as cool or as like grand and spectacular as Gears is obviously it's a huge franchise has been part of my life for quite a few years because I've played all of them and absolutely loved all of them mm. um if they're going to try building that type of thing then yeah you, you know I'm all I'm all up for crack it. on <laughs> crack on but I don't know if they would just drop like here's a here's a middle game mm. because we're working on Gears Mm. six and we can't rush gear six because obviously the what people are wanting we don't want to rush it out yeah um, yeah that they're kind of gonna pass another game out which doesn't have as much grandeur as the gears franchise might yeah um yeah i guess that's kind of what i'm what i would like to see i want to see a bit more marcus <laughs> to be honest <laughs> yeah if that's possible. It does make sense, yeah. yeah. I agree, but then I'd also like to see, yeah, something original, something new. Like, mm. show me something different. Um, 
Like just really out there. Yeah, just like show us what your collaboration's doing. Like, show us what you're working with. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I want some attitude. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what, if what they've got working in the pipeline or anything, but I just want something new. I want to just be wowed by something new. Oh, you want about course. Coalition or you want about well, Xbox just, in general? Well, just... Yeah, anything. Yeah. Uh, but I think, yeah, don't show me a sequel per se. I want something new to get excited about. Yeah, I don't about. want to see sequels. I don't want to see yeah. remakes. I want to see Xbox yeah. pull something out of the bag now. Because yeah. I feel like over the last couple of years that they're kind of falling a little bit behind PlayStation. Possibly. Like they're really good with Game Pass. But yeah, now I want some like an exclusive or even a timed exclusive or something like... Yeah, we want some really cool yeah. exclusives. And if it is like some new IP stuff, mm-hmm. then... Yeah. Yeah, I think that it does need that kind of injection of something cool I think it's again time. to yeah. yeah, to get people kind of re excited. Well, one game that we do know or we think we know is going to be there, which is not a sequel and not a reboot, mm. is going to be Starfield. So yes. it's ah, the yes. first yes. new IP from Bethesda Game Studios mm-hmm. in twenty five years. It's something ridiculous like that. So yeah. it's mad how long the sort of mm. Elder Scrolls and Fallout universes have yeah. kind of been like leapfrogging each other. And that's kind know. of all I think of when I think of Bethesda. It's literally those two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's that's the same for a lot of people, yeah. to be fair. And um, I, I'm a big fan of the Fallout universe. So if I'm going to get Fallout in space, that's pretty cool. I'll take a look. I'll take a look <laughs> at that. So that has a release date. It's probably the furthest confirmed release date that we have at the moment in time for any platform, any game on any platform. Okay. Uh, so that's the 11th of November this year. Uh, so okay. that was set in stone. That's a date that Todd mm-hmm. Howard clearly loves because that's when Skyrim launched it's really important to Bethesda uh, and also 11-11 11-11-22 it's quite that's, good that's a very good number if you're strong into day. numerology strong then 11-11 is major it's big yeah. apparently it's, it's big if you like one 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 one. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing some more Starfield because yeah. um, we've seen a few glimpses of it so far we've had a lot of uh, developer like behind the scenes yep. cuts Give me a vertical slice of it. I'd be quite happy with that. And then go completely like blind yeah. on it for I the next I was going to say, months. don't do what other games might do and just yeah. kind of throw everything into media. Yeah, and don't do what Square kind Enix of do. <laughs> seen way too much of it and you're almost like resenting it by the time mm. it's come out. Yeah. So I mean, Bethesda do have a track record of doing this now mm. with Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 both being announced in the summer and then we see a release later that year so obviously starfield has already been announced so it's ahead of its sort mm. of com- uh it's ahead of the fallout series in that regard however we are expecting to see some really sort of thorough gameplay this this summer at this probably at this event but yeah, yeah. Ollie, like you outside of that i'm not really bothered about microsoft's like current like ips yeah you know yeah. like i don't need a another Halo or another Gears or anything I wouldn't like that. say I'm no sure to them. I do like, I do sure like, gonna, um, um, I do um, like um, them, um, but. Let um, me finish. Let me finish. We do, well, we, do we do, <laughs> you know, I do think that they have a place for people. Yeah. However, they don't resonate with me particularly. Yes. So they've got all these talented studios. Show me what you got. Yes. Okay. I've got a question for you, Theo. You've never owned an Xbox. False. <gasps> okay. I have owned. You've. The original Xbox, and I've owned the Xbox 360. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't think that you... Okay. Xbox isn't a major part of your gaming No, but history. then that comes that comes down to budget, doesn't it? I know it, it comes down yeah. to budget, but I was going to say, like, what does Xbox have to do, and will they do it this summer for you to say, okay, I'm going to go buy an Xbox now? I think they're kind of doing the the right thing at the moment with, you know, they are trying to gain ground on Sony. Um Game Pass is the the way in, I think. They've been very pro-consumer over the last couple of years. I've got a lot of time for Big Phil. I think what he do, what he's done for the brand has been wonderful. The thing that it needs to do is it needs to release some games mm-hmm. that stick the landing. See, for me, that's a big part of where I choose to play primarily, I guess, because Sony have those franchises, those big blockbusters that I that I want to play yeah. in addition to being able to offer me the third party games and the smaller indie titles that I love. Mm-hmm. So if they can do that, then 
and the cash is available, yeah. then yeah. Uh, that wasn't a plea for cash. Don't send me cash. Uh, send him an Xbox. <laughs> yeah, send, send me an Xbox. Um, Microsoft, if you're listening. Big Phil, I love you. If you're listening, send me an Xbox. Uh, but yeah, basically, um, that that's all that it is, really. You yeah. know, like, if it mm-hmm. was, if I was in that position where I could go and just buy an Xbox tomorrow, I would go and buy an Xbox tomorrow and it would sit on my uh, counter next to my Switch and my PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Collecting dust or not? Uh, no. well, it, well, like what? Like now, what is what would make you get an Xbox now if you I could? One hundred percent be playing Tunic right now. I wouldn't be doing this podcast. Oh. <laughs> I would be all over Tunic, and that's that's the thing, you know. And that's that is a game that could potentially go to mm. other platforms. I could go and play it on my PC if I wanted to, but my PC is a bit ropey as well. Um, <laughs> I'd rather play it on a console because then I can sit on my sofa and mm. I can play it on the big TV and look at the cute little fox. Um, <laughs> so yeah, stuff like that is always great. And you know, mm. th- there's some of the, so we had a look through Game Pass the other day. Yeah. There's a ton of games on there that there's are fantastic. Um, but the ones that, there's nothing on there that is necessarily exclusive at the moment that I'm dying to play. Mm, I have yeah. played the big haters like um, uh, uh, the Flight Sim. Yeah. <laughs> the, yes. flight the Flight Sim. sim. The Microsoft Flight Sim. That took me a second. <laughs> but my interest in that game experience for instance mm. is basically i want to get a plane i want to fly over my house because i'm a narcissist i was just gonna say how many people didn't do that first i think that's what everyone did I right i think that's what everyone uses it for oh look you- there's my house and it doesn't quite look like that in real life yeah why is there trees there when there's actually not a tree there i yeah. flew over my house and then i took a cessna down the thames and i tried to fly <laughs> under tower yes! bridge that's exactly what we did <laughs> exactly the completely same. independently Could, yeah yeah because it's just like this is what i want to do and yeah. then i had my film oh, okay. basically you yeah. know, um, I did then go to Mount Fuji. That was my third oh, thing. Cool. Oh, and some then, of it, yeah. And, and really how difficult it is to fly up. Everest. Like, up Everest. <laughs> just go, meow, 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 like beeps, and you just can't. I just couldn't work out how to Slow fly up steady. the mountain. That's why people don't do it. No. Quite possibly. <laughs> Being a pilot is tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I just thought I held, I held back on the joystick. You just, you just and, I, you, and I went, go up. right foot on the accelerator. <laughs> Take it down a gear. Give it the gas. Straight just up the like, mountain. Just like driving a car. Handbrake <laughs> <laughs> turn at the top. Duh. <laughs> Scooch back down. <laughs> nice, nice and easy. Okay. It is, yeah. But something that hasn't been easy is bringing Avatar 2 out. Oh, yes. How many years? So the original Avatar came out in 2009. Avatar Good. 2 was originally scheduled for 2014. Wow. <gasps> So eight years later, yeah. we've now got an announcement. So we've got an announcement. We have a title, which is... Uh, water. Something of water. Oh, wait, it's just Avatar of head. water. Avatar 2, The Way of Water. That's the it. Way of Water. Which I think we could have probably guessed that there's going to be a major water aspect to this film, mainly because James Cameron was obviously obsessed with like Marina's <laughs> Trench and going down mm. in um, submarines and filming and capturing the kind of the alien life form that we have at the bottom of our oceans. Okay. You made that film about that boat? There's a boat <laughs> film that he apparently done. Did it, did it actually, did it sink or did it, did it stay afloat? Like, yeah, do we know? Yeah, I think that's under. We can't talk know. about that. I think there's spoilers if we speak yeah, about yeah, that yeah, film. Yeah. Back to the blue cats. Back to the blue cats. <laughs> should we, or maybe not should we, because I know I will, will you be watching Avatar 2. Well, I will be watching a bit of Avatar 2 next week because the uh, even though they've just announced the, the full title treatment um, and they've given a release date of the 16th of December 2022, they haven't shown a trailer to anyone outside uh, of like select circles yeah. right now. That changes next week. Mm, so yeah. Disney are putting the trailer... Uh, at the front end of Doctor Strange in the, multi- in the Multiverse of Madness, which comes out on the 6th here in the UK. Um, nice. So I'll be, go- I'll be there to see that film and I will inevitably see oh, okay. the blue cats. So you're going to see nice. the trailer see of Avatar it. 2 in a cinema. Yes. I'm a little bit jealous for that mm. because I, for one, I was a big fan of the original Avatar. Yes. I loved it. But... How many people actually know the characters' names in Avatar? Like, it was such a big hitting film. It was like, 
gross like the most amount of money ever and then you put people on the spot and say who was the main character's name jake sully oh there you go there you go <laughs> I can't, Sully, right? I can't remember. Yeah, Jake Sully. But, it's, but it's I can't remember those, her name. Yeah, it's one of those things where it was such a big film. People watched it multiple yeah. times because it was quite a revolution at the time with the it 3D was. aspect and the, the mocap and everything. And even years ago when it was still fairly big, I just felt like people didn't... Mm. Like you connected to the film, but did you connect with the characters? Does it stick in your memory? Does it, yeah. yeah, does it stick? Like people know it's like tall blue people who mm. kind of look like cats but yeah i just found that there was there was this kind of weird disconnect in a way do mm. we think that after the abomination that was andrew lloyd webber's cats people were going to have an appetite to go and see cat people in the cinema again i mean i don't genuine I, question not I mean, being funny i uh, <laughs> i have faith that these blue cats will look like the old blue cats and will enjoy I, it i honestly think that this film it is bound to get stigma it's bound to get the kind of yeah weird treatment that people are just gonna hate on it it's been 13 years it's, it's been yeah. delayed and because of what it is it's almost like a meme yeah. now i almost find it a bit strange that they've like remastered the first one for release in like september mm -hmm. yeah and then the other one's coming out in december i yeah. wonder why they chose that time period because, because for me i just want to watch them back to back <laughs> i want to go to the cinema on december the 16th and stay there for like the whole day and watch both yeah. 22nd i guess the is it 20? it's the 20 it's, sorry 22nd, it's the, is it? is it, it's the yeah. 16th in the u.s 16th in the u.s I think possibly globally. I've actually just cleared the note. 16th of December, 2022. That's okay. the date I have. The okay. reason behind uh, Avatar 1 being remastered and put in the cinemas in September, I think is to give more people an opportunity. I know what you're saying about having a back-to-back -back showing. Yeah. But I think that's for a select few people who that's will be I mean, up for yeah. going to sit in the cinema for like six hours. I'll do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the cinema <laughs> for six uh, hours. So yeah, they're going to release the remastered version of the original film uh, in September. They'll give people plenty of chance to catch up on the story is of it, Jake Sully. Is it being remastered <laughs> in 3D or in 2D? Do we know that? We Well, I don't know that, but... I don't know if that information no. is out there. I think it's just kind of been, oh, it's being remastered for modern mm, audiences. Yeah. I think they may need a little bit more to draw people back in. Of course, the original film is one of the highest grossing movies of yeah. all time. So there is a fan base for it, surely, like yourself. Yeah. Um, how that fan base has been affected over the last 10 plus years of Marvel you know, people mm, have a different expectation yeah. of these cinematic universes now. And, I think, and Jim Cameron has been I working on this for such that, a long time. But I think that this will blow people away. It's just getting people to the cinema because people have got yeah. that stigma around it. It's just getting people there. Again, we don't want it to be over advertised. I don't want to see it on every single mm. bus, every single billboard, every single or every yeah. other advert on YouTube or whatever. I want it to be released. I want it to be wowed by like the the trailer yeah and then almost step back a little bit and let people word of mouth spread yeah want to go and watch it rather than try to be drip fed over three mm -hmm. six months or whatever yeah. no i agree um but i honestly think that this film because it's been worked on for so long the technology which was developed in the original one the the time the budget like everything which has gone into this new film I'm 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 hoping my fingers are crossed mm -hmm. that it will be a revolution for cinema. Yes, it has and the potential. It's whether they've pulled it off, and I I hope it's going to be that new standard of incredible graphics. You know, incredible mm -hmm. CG, incredible. I think mo -cap. that's the thing. We have very high expectations, and usually when you go into a film though with high expectations. It's quite hard to like keep that standard. When you go to watch something and it's low expectations, you're usually like, actually, that was amazing. Yeah. So I hope that we haven't got our standards too high. Hopefully not, but I I don't know. I just got a I've got a feeling that yeah. it's just gonna have a wow factor. Even if the story's a little bit limp, a little bit flat or something, I think the actual graphical aspect mm. and the grandeur of it because of the way it's going to be captured and the things yeah. what they've focused on like i said with the kind of the underworld underwater scenes and stuff i've seen a few kind of shots of people in mocap suits underwater being captured by mocap oh, okay. cameras and stuff and scuba divers filming them underwater it's just going to be like out, out, of of this the, out of this world type of filming and me i'm obviously a massive film nerd like 
I film content. That's my job. I, I love anything film and seeing things that can hopefully revolutionize the industry. Yes. I, I don't know. I'm putting a lot on that mm-hmm. this film is hopefully going to be that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. There's a trilogy, right? They've made, like, there's going to be two. There's some eventually. heavy lifting here because Avatar 2 is, I think, the first of four planned sequels. Oh, okay. So, I didn't know that. I mean, with Disney's bankroll behind it, like, maybe mm, they'll it have will it? never end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if it, if if it, it lands can grace a success, a, a, like, um, over a billion again, like Avatar yeah. 1 did, and like, which is crazy quick. How yeah, but it's was. dropping down now because other yeah. films are coming mm. in and getting that pretty quick now. Mm. So is it going to be, I guess, a, well, it will be a cinema release. Do we know anything about if it's coming to Disney Plus or anything like that? Uh, if not at the moment. No. Mm. I think I think probably with uh, the way that Disney have been going recently, yeah. it's they're, they're kind of switching a bit back towards... You still do get some yeah. big... big Films hitting day and date in mm. uh, on Disney Plus. Uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, I think, is the next big one, which I'm really looking forward to. Twentieth <laughs> of May, I can't wait. Slight different vibe, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, Disney have basically been on a roll with stuff this week with mm. with Avatar being announced, new trailer for Chippendale, which does feature a Keyblade in it. I will say, um, oh. but also the other big thing that Disney announced this week was um, Dreamlike Valley. Tell us more. Okay. I was say, sorry, what? Might, might have passed us by. <laughs> so Disney, Dream Like Valley. Disney Dream Light Valley Light. is mm-hmm. the new, I guess, Disney meets Animal Crossing game. Okay. Which is going to be free to play and it's coming out in early access this summer, ahead oh. of its full 1.0 release next year. Basically, they've shown us a little trailer. It looks like a really nice, cozy game okay. where you get to make your avatar, you get all of your clothes, your house, your whatever you need, you know, it's all customizable and you make your own little plot of land. You can go fishing with Goofy. <laughs> you can hang out with Buzz and Woody. Okay. All of, basically, all of these like classic Disney and Pixar characters are mm-hmm. in Dreamlight Valley. Um, they've all lost their memory because of some magical thorns. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it just looks like it's going to be one really cozy little space for anyone who loves Disney to hang out in. Okay, so that does sound interesting. I'll be there on, <laughs> on PS5, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that's been announced this week. That was just yeah, the other little that. like other thing to look out for from Disney this year. Mm. So yeah, They're keep your eyes peeled on uh, this summer to, okay. to see. It's free to play. So why that's impressive. Inevit- inevitably, we're going to get some microtransactions down the road yeah. for buying stuff because um, Disney don't do things for free. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey, Disney. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks like a fun, cozy little game. Nice. And one other fun, not so cozy, and well, maybe sweaty game that we've played this <laughs> week has been this one right here. Yes. So uh, Nintendo the, Switch Sports. Nintendo Switch Sports, which by the time this podcast goes out, you'll be able to check out our review. Mm-hmm. Um, so A we, fairly in-depth review, probably. Well, we, it is. We played all the games. We basically... <laughs> we had a great time. We, we played it and reviewed it before this very podcast. So if <laughs> yes. you watch them back to back you can kind of see that we've probably got a little bit of a sweat on because <laughs> we've just been playing that. We we honestly had a great time. Yeah. We're not yeah. going to give too much away in this podcast because if you want to know our like true and kind of unbiased opinions of mm. this game, then go over and check that video out because it's a good video. You get to see us play some games and we give our kind of two cents on it. It's fun. It was just good fun. It was good fun. Holly's, I kind of want to go. I kind of want to go play it again. Spoiler alert! <laughs> yeah. We will definitely be playing it again after the podcast. Yes, we yeah. were saying actually that that would be a very very fun game to live stream. It would, yeah. Like I imagine think... like a Friday night live stream. That's what I mean. Like sports. That would be pretty hilarious. Definitely. Like, Winner stays wanna... on. Like all those types of that things. That means I'd never get to play. <laughs> <laughs> right. You were surprisingly good at. I didn't one win. of them. I didn't win any. Did you not did win I? it? I can't remember now. I had a great time even though I lost. Anyway, go over (laughs) after the podcast and check out the uh, Switch Sports games. We will link it. Games? Review of the game. We will link it in the uh, video description down below as well if you want to go check that out later. Yeah, and it's out now. It is out now. It's out today. It's out now. I bought that from our local independent game store. Support your local independent game store. Yes, please do. Yes, not sponsored. Nintendo, if you're you're listening, (laughs) then, you know... 
We have our feature new <laughs> Xbox. If you're listening, give him an Xbox. <laughs> Let, right, on to PlayStation. Later on, I'm sure we'll be asking PlayStation for yes. something. <laughs> I'm sure. Something I have played on PlayStation that I did get for free this week. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the segue there. <laughs> is um, the Isle of Bug Snacks. Uh, sorry, the oh. Isle of Big Snacks DLC for Bug Snacks. What a mouthful. I know. <laughs> literally, yes. these big snacks. literally yes. these are big snacks so uh yeah the isle of big snacks was released yesterday for ps5 it's a free update for okay. people who already have uh have the game on playstation mm-hmm. but also uh it has now been launched in game pass on xbox and they nice. again get the new content and Hello. it is now available Hello. for <laughs> and it's now available for uh nintendo switch it's already been available on pc as so it's well. everywhere basically so it's now everywhere so we could play it for free as well on game pass you could we could Ooh. oh hello hello game pass <laughs> <laughs> hello bug snacks on game pass <laughs> so yeah i've um i played through the all of the dlc yesterday i had fun i am putting together a <laughs> review of it so i'm not going to say too much more but yeah keep it uh keep locked on the uh jht channel mm-hmm. and uh we'll have that out hopefully over the weekend or the start of next we week. have got a lot of things in, We've got yeah, a lot of in, things a, in a couple of if you're watching this or listening to this podcast when it's released that review will also be out in a couple of days time as well so yes mm-hmm. subscribe to uh <laughs> see when that's make, out. make sure you don't miss it yes so i had quite a busy evening last night because not only was i playing the <laughs> isle of big snacks which is full of gigantic bug slash snack hybrid type things mm-hmm. there was one that was like a giant stick of celery that had lots of tiny chocolate ants on its that's back that's not a good snack <laughs> no, no one wants to snack celery. on celery does anyone actually like celery is celery like a thing where people like man celery's great what serious oh you, you <laughs> too eat, eat some veg <laughs> eat everything but celery <laughs> yeah celery's <laughs> a waste of effort okay yeah. so there was also a pie Okay, we could, like pie. That you could uh, capture, but in order to capture it first, you had to remove its lid using like a little grappling hook. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so this thing is just like walking around like, oh, I'm a pie man. Sort of thing. <laughs> it's like, that was pretty cool. So yeah, some really good, interesting uh, bug snacks in that game. Okay. However, that wasn't the only thing I did last night because I mm-hmm. also watched Vikings Valhalla. Episode one. Episode, episode one. one. We also watched episode one of Vikings Valhalla. It's now been out, I think, But not together. A month? No, not together. No, we haven't watched it together. Um, I'm only allowed over for the podcast. <laughs> as soon as this is done. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> no, we both watched Vikings Valhalla last night separately, mm-hmm. individually. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, me and Holly watched it together and you watched it on your own. Yeah. Um, not invited. <laughs> <laughs> and Vikings Valhalla it has been out, I think, like a month. It's been a while, yeah. Six weeks or Slightly something. Slightly late it's been out now. It's on Netflix and it is the kind of the... Sequel, sequel to spin-off. sequel spin-off from Vikings, which is actually over on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. Now, I think it was originally on like History Channel, then Amazon took over it and ran for seven series, eight series, quite a it few was quite series. A few. And we, or me and Holly, absolutely loved Vikings yeah. over on Amazon Prime. It was it just got better and better season after season. We both found it like it was quite incredible. incredible. I thought by the end of it, like cinematically beautiful, mm-hmm. like the way it was filmed, the way it was shot, the styling, everything was just incredible. Yeah. And by the by the the latter end of all those seasons, it just was I don't know. I, I absolutely loved it and it had a really nice kind of finale as well, quite yeah. a nice sort of send-off. I know a lot of series when they're gonna end people are kind of disappointed with the season finale. It's yeah. A lot of people screw the pooch on the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they do, Theo. But I would say the Vikings is in like my top 10. Um, of TV series. Yeah, TV series of all time. It's in there. Yeah. I have not ranked them, but I would say it's up there. I think, yeah, I'd say it's definitely up there, top 10. Yeah. Um, There's so, a list feature brewing here. Top I was 10 just thinking, TV. oh my God, I don't even know what number one is. It's a, it's in the top 10. It's in the top. I can't top name the top something. nine, but it's in there. Let us know your top 10 TV <laughs> shows and we'll discuss it and we'll make a list. But out. anyway, back to Valhalla, Val- the Vikings, one on Netflix. Yeah, Vikings Valhalla is now on Netflix, which is now basically set about 100 years after after Vikings, which is on Prime. Yes. You don't have ha- you you don't need to have watched the Vikings on Prime. Nope. Um there at the very beginning of Vikings Valhalla, there's a little bit of a backstory 
in a weird kind of text yeah, format. Not a fan. It's very cheesy. Yeah, I was yeah. not a fan of that. It was like, <laughs> here we go, we're sitting down, we're gonna watch Vikings. Hopefully we're gonna like go straight into a really cool Viking battle. No, it gives you an essay to read. A black screen with white text. But All over exposition it. that was written clearly the last thing on a Friday before everyone was going home for the weekend. And it was a lot yeah. of text. It's not like it was like a nice summary, like couple of lines. No, <laughs> yeah. like we had to go and do some it homework. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like a nice Star Wars, you know, text no. scrolling down the screen, setting the scene or anything. No. It was just plain white text on a black screen. Slightly disappointing um, that it didn't kind of tell that story in kind of flashbacks. Yeah, or they could have made it more interesting. Narrated by someone telling, a, I don't know, a child or something. It could have been done in a very different, mm. cleverer type of mm. way. I wonder if the lack of flashbacks there is perhaps because of the Netflix Prime thing. Maybe yeah. the, maybe they can't use that yeah, but footage. I don't, but maybe I don't mean a, a full flashback, but maybe it's almost like you know, you've got like close-ups of swords and mm. I don't know. <laughs> they blood, could have like done something blood, creative. Yeah, like blood dripping down like axes or going over a battlefield that you're not showing the footage from Vikings, but it's narrated by someone's voice like a hundred yeah. years ago, da da da. You know, tell mm. the story. What we're saying is Be- show don't tell. Show yeah. don't tell. Yes. Yeah. But apart I can't from read that, that much when I'm eating my pizza. Yes, we were eating pizza <laughs> whilst watching it at the same time. Um apart from that Vikings episode, Vikings Valhalla, episode one, thoughts and opinions? It's always tricky when you watch like a new series, first episode. I don't think it's really fair to judge um, because I'm sure when we watched the very first episode of Vikings on Prime, we were probably a bit like, hmm, what's this about? I do feel if people went and watched the very first episode of the original Vikings because it's probably, I don't know, 10 years ago now. I do remember when we watched that, we were comparing it to Game of Thrones because that was around the same time. So we were a bit like, well, it's not Game of Thrones, is it? And my initial reaction was, well, it's not the other Vikings, is it? But it's episode one. But I do feel, though, that this didn't really have the cheap aspect of a TV series. It no. didn't It didn't feel like, oh, they've kind of... It had good budget, out it looks on, like. ...on budget here. They, it, it was filmed well. Mm-hmm. It, it had some nice kind of graphics in it and stuff. And there was a, you know, it didn't feel like they've just copy and pasted 10 people to make it look like a thousand, which no. a lot of these... Sometimes, kind of, yeah, episode one is a bit ropey. Yeah, a lot of these kind of historical battle scenes, they just tried yeah. to have this grandeur in episode one to be like, wow, look how big the battles are. And, and you can tell it's just 10 people. <laughs> yeah, copy and paste it like yeah. 100 times all I mean, over the screen. I did feel like they could only afford one big wave. There was yeah, there was a big wave. One. <laughs> um, and there was lots of buckets of water being thrown sure. at people's Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a bit like, there's clearly mm. someone off screen throwing a bucket yeah. of water. Yeah. I don't know how you make TV, so... <laughs> Buckets of water. But but that seemed like a bucket of water. Yeah. yeah. And a remarkably small boat. Yes. Uh, I mean, that's, that's to speak to their prowess as sailors. Yeah, so that was a... Uh, Could you imagine going five weeks in that boat? Five weeks. How do you carry that much water for that many people? That's what went through my head. And food. Yeah, but just Where'd water. You sleep? We, <laughs> they're Vikings. They don't sleep. <laughs> Where's the bug snacks? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think if you went for five weeks without water, you'd be seeing a lot of bug snacks. Yes, yeah. like everywhere. You'd be like everything is edible. <laughs> um, but yes, I will continue watching it because um, I can't really judge it yet. But yeah. it looks nice. The story. Well, we'll have to see. The story it didn't goes. grip me as much as I would like no. it to have. I think I, I kind of expected most of the things that they were leading into, and I can kind of see where I think it's going. So we'll see. But I suppose yeah. how much is it baked in history, so how many surprises can there really be? The, the trouble is, is it doesn't have Ragnar, it doesn't have Lagatha, doesn't have Lagatha, it doesn't so have therefore. Bjorn. Like, <laughs> yeah. they were just built up to be such good, awesome characters in Vikings. Yes. That... You know, they're almost starting again. And I'd say the same with, like, The Last Kingdom. I really struggled with The Last Kingdom because... Because there was no Lagatha. There wasn't... Yeah, people like Lagatha in it. And I know that in Vikings, they're almost stylized to, to be... Yeah. ...a certain way, certain aesthetic. Yes, it might look, not be historically correct that they look like that. And they've got, like... But everyone's perfectly beautiful. <laughs> ...white, clean teeth and stuff. Everyone is beautiful in yeah. Vikings. Where Last Kingdom, I felt like there was no one which really stood out. Yeah. And 
the same with this, I'm kind of struggling to see who, which characters are really going to kind of connect with me for a story to yeah. kind of be engrossed in it as much as I did the original Vikings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. What about you? You haven't seen Vikings and you've only watched one episode of this? Yeah, so I've not seen the original Vikings on Prime. I've seen the first episode of this. I thought it was particularly mild. <laughs> mild cheddar. <laughs> it's, the, it, it's very, meh. Mm-hmm. you know, I watched, I watched the full episode and I thought, yeah, okay, I can see what people will get from this, it, mm-hmm. it, you know, but it's not my no. not my cup of tea. Okay. So um, if you enjoy it, great, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm not trying to like poo-poo anything. You know, I like to celebrate all sort of media. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you're enjoying it. But if it's it, not for you, it's not for it's, you. It's yeah. not for me. It's yeah. not for me. But one thing that is for me is definitely Moon Knight. And oh, We've talked yes. about it on the podcast before, and I know you haven't seen it. No, we haven't. We're behind the times. But episode five of Moon Knight may be some of the best TV I have ever seen. Oh, wow. And in particular, some of the best acting in a TV show I've ever seen from one Oscar Isaac. Or should I say two Oscar Isaacs? (laughs) That's quite a statement. Yeah. And that that alone is intriguing enough to make me think, okay, maybe we'll give it a go. So you can watch it separately to any of the any of the other MCU projects, which I think is a real benefit. That was gonna be my next question, because we well yeah, we don't really watch much superhero esque mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I wouldn't even know where appealing. to start. So yeah, if something's like a standalone, I'm much more inclined to say let's have a go. But if something needs a backstory, I probably don't know it. I think the trouble is with that because there is so much exactly MCU mm-hmm. stuff now. Yeah, it's like where do you begin? Yes, exactly. So if this is within that world, but you don't need to know. Anything else? Anything else? You don't need to have watched the previous twenty-two films. And yeah, that's, all of that's the, exactly you don't need it. Spend the next five years, you know. Like, <laughs> come on, go watch all these films. Watch like, everything watch at like ten times the speed. Yeah, <laughs> which you can't do on Netflix. I discovered that oh. yesterday. Is that because you wanted to? <laughs> that's like, how much you like. Come on, it. come we on, get yeah, another idea. bucket of water. I see. It, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Basically, you can watch this as its own nice. standalone thing. Yes, it probably is going to have some connections to the MCU. And it definitely does. Because okay? yeah. everything with But Disney you don't need to. You're not going to be sat there going, what are you on about? If you pay no attention to anything else. And the actual thing about not particularly being enthralled by superheroes, the actual Moon Knight character himself, mm. when he's suited and booted, I think he's been in it for like less than 10 minutes. <laughs> and okay, that's really interesting. We're like five episodes in, and each episode's huh. sixty. Well, close to sixty minutes, I suppose. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's a real small amount of time that he's actually been in the suit. But the characters that um, Oscar Isaac has been playing have both been just incredible to watch. Okay, and this episode has just taken it up another notch. So okay. I think that man deserves an Oscar. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah, <ba-dum-bum. laughs> and that's everything that i've watched and enjoyed this week have you two seen anything else um, it's been quite a quiet week it's often, been i think it's been a quiet week of consuming content but yeah. it's been a busy week with everything else going yes. on in life and work life and is house busy and craziness going <laughs> mm-hmm. on and stuff at the moment uh no i th- i think oh no we, we did finish we crash so last uh, episode of the podcast we touched upon that we were watching we crashed mm-hmm. and i think we said at the time that the final episode was going to be out the day we were recording yeah. the podcast we have finished it um and they crashed they did crash um thoroughly enjoyable i thought it was yeah. a very very good series overall um i would recommend it it's on apple tv i found it quite interesting though that well as you know we're from england and i had never heard of we work until no. this oh wow that's interesting so i don't quite know how what rock we lived under but the we work i didn't know anything about it but also you know because I mean. of the work that you do and the work yeah. that you do yeah. you won't necessarily need uh office yeah. space like that well, exactly <laughs> so. yeah so i just found it interesting that this whole thing happened mm. in quite a public space and um i'd never even heard of it before yeah. never heard about anything didn't never heard of adam newman or anything like that it just passes by but coming off the back of watching is what well, basically as soon as we finish watching yes. the final episode i was like how true to life is this yes so it made me as soon as that the credits rolled for the final episode. I was straight on YouTube mm-hmm. finding kind of interviews documentaries, with him. interviews, and um, and some of it obviously is dramatized. And it was quite interesting to separate yeah, what is dramatized and what's not. 
it was quite a good series to make me then want to kind of do my own research and work yeah. out what was right, what was wrong, what does he actually look like in real life? Mm. What yeah. do the other people like? Who who are these people in real life? Because obviously it's based upon a true story and it's current as mm. well. Yeah, like the whole thing about it is the company going public. Yeah, and didn't that happen funding. last year? And it literally happened not that long ago. Not that I keep up with finance much, but... Um. No, <laughs> but it was just that one of those things that I think that that kind of, that means something. Like if you watch a TV show mm. and then you go off and you kind of do your own research and want yes. to find out more. Like, I love films that leave something, leave a question in the back of your mind mm. that doesn't just, here. here's everything on a platter, you've watched it and then you've, go about your life and you don't think about it again yeah. because yeah, yeah. you've been told everything. I like the kind of... Um, hmm. Yeah, what the, if? The questions yeah. around things and obviously being a dramatization of something that happened in real life hmm. made me then want to do my own research. It's very similar if we look at Vikings as well, that we obviously live in England and we live in kind yeah. of the southwest of England. Um, we live in basically, it used to be Wessex. Yeah. So a lot of Viking history is or revolves around where we actually live. I did do quite a bit of studying after we finished watching yeah, it. So it yeah, so it was one of those things where you can actually start connecting the dots mm-hmm. and the battles they talk about in Vikings are actually mm. kind of local to us. And we've got, you know, lots of kind of pubs and mm-hmm. stuff locally that have the same names as like the King Alfred and, you know, yeah. those types of the things. History. So having something within a TV series or a film that kind of resonates with you. Obviously, everyone will be very individual and very separate Mm. about that. Different things connect to different people. Um, But I would feel if I watch, say, Moon Knight, I wouldn't then go do my own research about Moon Knight because it's a... a Because he wasn't from here. Because he's not from here. (laughs) Because it's it's more of a fictional thing. The the way you would do that research would be to then go into the MCU and watch more films and shows kind of around it Mm -hmm. where watching things which is obviously kind of fantasy like vikings it's still kind of steeped in kind of history around a bit of both yeah Yeah. because obviously there wasn't much stuff wrote down back in the viking (laughs) days (laughs) (laughs) but yes just just carved into people (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah exactly (laughs) tell mum unfortunately for dinner (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Unfortunately, they degrade those, so that message didn't, look, yeah. didn't last. <laughs> <laughs> That's one old school encryption method. <laughs> so that brings us towards the end of our podcast. But of course, okay. before we go, we have trivia time. Trivia time. So oh, we're here already. Currently, James, you are on two. Mm-hmm. Holly, you are on one. Mm-hmm. Everything's still to play for. And if you're not familiar with trivia time, basically each week we ask James and Holly a multiple choice question and at the end of the year we will assign one of them whoever wins whoever gets the most points a little prize and we're inherently I think, bad I think that the people watching and and watch to or listen to the end of the podcast they should be the ones who choose what the prize is and it could just be you know like a prank I, nice. know, I don't know if you want to give people I, the I'm internet gonna, that I, sort of power. I'm not sure about that James <laughs> <laughs> let us know let us know so that your mm. prize has arrived it's vibrating and it looks like it might be on fire <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> oh my <laughs> but today's okay. trivia time question is in James Cameron's 2009 film Avatar <laughs> name the original character what oh. is the name oh, gosh. of the mineral that the, te- oh. that the team from Earth are mining on Pandora I did remember the planet was called Pandora and I was hoping that was going to be your question, I have to say. I'm quite disappointed it's not. So is the name of the mineral that the team from Earth are mining on Pandora A, Raritanium, B, Navite, C, Europium, or D, Unobtainium? Okay. Can we have it once more, please? Of course. In James Cameron's 2009 film Avatar, what is the name of the mineral that the team from Earth are mining on Pandora? A. Raritanium. B. Navite. C. Europium. Or D. Unobtainium. James, as you're in the lead, we're going to ask you to go first. Should know this. I thought... Such when a you, big fan of Avatar. You, you shouldn't have said yeah, that on this, this is, episode. <laughs> this is what this I was said. 13 years ago. <laughs> this is, is, true, this is, is my true. exact point. Like, mm. it meant so much to so many people, yeah. but the actual 
the details, aspect, the details yeah. of it didn't didn't stick, which I found very it's strange. It's feeling. I see you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, remember you. I see you. <laughs> I, when you said them originally, mm -hmm. I thought I knew the answer. Ooh. When you said them the second time, the answer which I was going to go for now sounds made up. <laughs> and now I can't unhear that it sounds made up. They all sound made up. That I don't know whether I should just go for it. In your defence, every word is made up. Technically, every word is made up. <laughs> yes. But Okay, so... You have A, Raritanium, B, Navite, C, Europium, or D, Unobtainium. Okay. <sighs> you see, they... <laughs> you, you've done very well. You've done with, very well. With work of, of wording things like unattainium and rare attainium, like the, they all sound. The, the eums. Yeah. Okay. I was originally going to go for a rare attainium, but it just sounds like it's made up oh. now. And Holly for you. Um. A, rare attainium, B, navite, C, europium, or D, unobtainium. I don't know between B and C. <laughs> um, B. You are going for B, Navite. I am pleased to say that I have stumped you once again. It's, it's C, C, isn't it? It is D. Oh, oh, yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. That sounds made up. James Cameron decided that the unobtainable miner mineral in his sci-fi epic would be called unobtainium. Well... See, that's... That's but the one. I will give you some credit because raritanium is actually a mineral that is rare in the Ratchet and Clank universe. Oh. <laughs> I know I heard it from somewhere. Navite, I made up. I was well, going to say made up Navite very good because ones. it's, yeah, that sounded made up. Raritanium. They all sound they made all, up now. Obviously they all are. Well, they're called the Navi, right? Yeah. So I was well, that's like, what I was thinking. Navite. I was like, yeah, that sounded familiar. And I thought, well, you never know. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that it wasn't the other one I thought and it was one which I didn't think it was that makes losing easier yes <laughs> <laughs> we should also have a count on how many you've managed to stump us on like rather than just saying James has two I have one you, well, you probably three have like, three. that's what I mean three. but we should keep count of that well yeah three, yeah, three. this three. is episode six this is episode six. Oh, okay yeah two, simple maths one. all right guys so Great Theo maths. is in so technically Theo is winning <laughs> Theo is in the lead yeah it's like he's winning at the two, quiz that three, he designed <laughs> two hmm. three one. Oh man oh, I mean we're, we're counting you, in that order again oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean if you if you have watched or listened to the end of the podcast let us know did you know that answer in the comment section down below because that was a very tricky one. They're all tricky. Yeah. You do make me feel stupid, Theo. <laughs> no, 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 no. They are there for us to learn and to have fun. Exactly. It's great fun. So, but Holly, you do what make was it? The last one. Which was? Unobtainium. Unobtainium. Because you can't yes. obtain it. So, why are yeah. they? Are they yeah. Oh, man. So many it's clever. questions. It's clever. Well done, James. <laughs> well done, Jamesy boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. On that note. But that's also a good reminder that we have got that Twitter where we do do trivia. And it's not unobtainium. And it's not, it's never unobtainium. <laughs> Anyone can have, have access Anyone to Anyone can have access. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a different one every single day as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, varying difficulties. Varying difficulties. Some yeah. days were kind and some days were really not. Some of them are quite obscure, some, I have to say. Some of them yeah. are kind of fun. <laughs> but that brings us to the end of our podcast. Yes. So thank you very much for joining us. Remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Cool.